Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Man charged over theft at school farm in Guys Hill. A man has been charged with predator larceny in connection with the theft of items from the farm at Guys Hill High School in St. Catherine. Garfield Griffiths, otherwise called Little Dread, of Guys Hill, is to appear before the St. Catherine Parish Court on Lindsay on Tuesday, September 19. It is reported that about 1.30 a.m. on Saturday, September 17, residents observed street movement at the school farm and alerted the police. The police responded and a man was held with nine bunches of plantain and three bunches of banana valued about $40,000. He was arrested and charged. PNP supporters giving golden thumbs up. Supporters of the People's National Party PNP have heaped praises on President Mark Golden described his speech at Sunday's annual conference as relevant, comprehensive, and inspiring. Speaking for more than an hour at the party's 85th annual conference at the National Arena in St. Andrew, Golden spoke on a wide range of issues including investment, education, economic growth, and student loan reform. He also outlined the party's position on food security, human rights, and constitutional reform. One supporter told reporters that those areas captivated him. I thought it's the speech was relevant. It touched on all the salient point. It touched on the growth of the economy, education, and employee rights. All those really resonate with me. It has been something for the average man, and it had something for the businessman, he stated. Similar sentiments were expressed by Orville Manning, a 71-year-old retired teacher from Trelawney. The speech was very instructive to me. He added that the speech was also very detailed, very comprehensive, and captured all the relevant points. Another gentleman from Chilani, Charles Wilson, said it was a very good and it was inspiring. It shows the things that he has to offer when he becomes the next Prime Minister, he stated. Popular young social media personality Teddy Famous said, I think the party leader encapsulates everything that the country is going through. He also showed the country the right direction in which he wants to take the country and I must commend him for a strong message that was delivered. I just want to say thumbs up and to say that we are ready to take back Jamaica, he said. JTA to lobby for increased health insurance coverage for teachers. The Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, says it will be lobbying with the government for an increase in the health insurance coverage for educators. JTA President Leighton Johnson says an increase in the health insurance coverage will help improve access to health care for educators. The JTA will continue to advocate with the government to increase the surgical health benefits so that our teachers can have the financial backing to do the necessary checks as well as the tests that are required to alleviate or identify some of these conditions that are lurking as a result of the high intensity of the job that we have to undergo, he elaborated. Mr. Johnson has urged educators to prioritize their health and well-being by getting regular health checks. This comes in the wake of the death of principal of the St. Elizabeth-based Fullerton Primary School, Tisha Patrick Rowe, who died last Wednesday, and principal of the St. Andrew Bay's Jock Hill Primary School, Donald Twitter, who died on August 31. Mr. Johnson said educators should prevent burnout by delegating duties, incorporating technology, and being creative with their curricula. He also encouraged teachers to utilize resources available at the Jamaica Teachers Association to cope with the stress associated with the job. The Jamaica Teachers Association continues to offer the services of psychologists who teachers can call and make appointments with to deal with their psychosocial and other emotional issues the JTA president advised. Chief Justice says the country's parish courts are officially backlog free. The country's parish courts are officially backlog free, Chief Justice Brian stated during a meeting on September 18th swearing in ceremony for judges and masters in chambers. Chief Justice noted that this achievement comes two years ahead of schedule and attainment, he said, that should be viewed with great pride. He explained that the active caseload for the parish courts is below 3%, which is better than international requirements. He further explained that with most cases being cleared up within 12 months, a revision of the time standard will be done to reduce it to nine months. And the parish courts are now officially backlog free, and that is something we should be proud of two years ahead of time. And by that we mean that each 
the courts generally and each parish court individually, the active case load is now the case in backlog, the active case load is now under three percent. That exceeds international standard by two percent. There are no other courts in the region, not in the Caribbean, not in Central America, not in South America that have achieved that for courts at that level. Six years of data telling us that 77% of the cases in the parish courts are disposed of in under 12 months. So where we are heading now is to bring that down to nine months and it is doable. Why do we know that it is doable? Because when you look at the statistics overall, it tells you, Your Excellency, that there is a two-hour period in the day that the courts are not sitting because the data tells us that the courtroom utilization is just about 63 percent. Some courts are at 70 and 80, which means that they pull the average up, which means that a number of courts are not making it to one o'clock. That's what that means. So what it means that you now have roughly two and a half hours in the day in which more of our citizens can be accommodated so those cases can be brought forward so that we reduce the delay because that's the whole point of this, you know. It's about improving service delivery, reducing the delay and the time that citizens have to wait for justice. And if we do that, then we will not just become one of the best in the Caribbean, but one of the best in the world because we are not far off from the OECD countries where they are down to roughly six months from filing to final disposition. We are at just under 12 months, so we are not far off. So if we utilize the days fully and completely, then we'll get there in short order. And that is why the process of selection of judicial officers is important because all the administrative work that goes on in the court is designed to support the adjudicatory process, whether they are a parish judge, whether they are a master, whether they are a judge of the Supreme Court or a judge of the Court of Appeal. Chang satisfied with facilities at temporary site of Bull Bay Police Station. Police officers attached to the Bull Bay Police Station in St. Andrew are operating in a reasonable and functional space after being temporarily located due to the alignment of the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project. This was expressed by Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Strong, who toured the station's new location at James Crescent in Bull Bay on Friday. The previous station building which was situated on the Nine Miles Mid Road, was demolished to facilitate the massive road project. Speaking with reporters, Chang said the new temporary space was an unused community facility that was renovated to the standards required by the police. Work was satisfactorily done, so the police officers have a reasonable space in which to operate. From what I have seen so far, I want to commend the teams that have worked on it to provide the police officers with a reasonable, comfortable space in which to operate, the minister stated. During the tour, Chang observed the main station areas, as well as staff facility containing restrooms and changing rooms, which he described as being in pretty good order. When we are moving police officers into a building, we fix the building to standards and specifications required by the police. We fix a police station for police officers. We don't move police officers into a building to make it a police station, he stated. Chang advised that constructing a building to permanent a house station will take some time. We are moving through the process. We have already put in the public sector investment program and we will look at the design work. That will take at least a year to get all of that done, he informed. The National Security Minister advised that there is adequate land space available at the station's previous location to rebuild the facility. But this temporary facility appears quite reasonable for the time being. Where we are now, I am quite satisfied that we have given the officers a reasonable, functional space to stay, he maintained. Chong also indicated that he will be seeking the National Works Agency's NWA support to repair some of the roads leading to the relocated facility. The public is advised that the station number remains the same, 876-967-6910 and 876-525-6810. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.